embarrassing. Megan cries like a baby over Kate again received new title to get closer to crown. Ahead of her 48th birthday this Sunday, our columnist pays homage to the home county's princess, now as lauded for her appearance as her late mother-in-law. At long last, after years of delays, the latest 007 film, No Time to Die, was out. All the stars were there in their finery but, as usual, one figure stood out. It was the Duchess of Cambridge, radiating such megawatt glamour in a gold cape-shouldered Jenny Packham outfit that she totally outshone everyone else present and moved the film's star, Daniel Craig, to tell her, you look jolly lovely. She did and, having knocked the Hollywood competition for a six, she deserved the compliment. But even so, it's quite something when a one-time home county's girl gets praised for her appearance by none other than James Bond. Besides, it is notable that Meghan Markle hasn't returned to the UK as she may sense she's not the most popular person with the public, a royal commentator has claimed. After leaving the UK with her husband Prince Harry in early 2020, Meghan hasn't yet returned for a public visit. This is despite Harry making the trip to unveil a statue commemorating his late mother Princess Diana in the summer. This summer, the Queen will celebrate her jubilee anniversary on the throne, and with plans for the long bank holiday weekend now accelerating, there has been speculation over whether the Sussexes will visit the UK to mark the occasion. It might prey on her mind as Kate Middleton, as was, turns 40 this Sunday, it's a tricky time for any woman especially one who lives much of her life in the limelight. But Kate has matured into her look to become a bona fide style icon. As a younger woman she had once pronounced, I am not a clothes horse, but the fact is she has become as lauded for her appearance as her late mother-in-law. Whereas Princess Diana famously turned to Anna Harvey, Vogue magazine's then fashion director, for help developing her look in the early days, Kate as far as we know has managed to figure it out all by herself. Of course, she would have had the help of Carol Middleton, another stylish matriarch, although these days she tends to wear her skirts a little too short, but it is an innate sense of very British elegance that has made the Duchess the perfectly dressed figure she is today. Right from the start, appearance mattered and she almost always got it right. She is said to have transfixed Prince William when they were both at university by wearing a totally see-through dress, her modesty protected by black lingerie, on a charity catwalk. Our future king is rumoured to have said, wow, Kate's hot. But she has never worn anything quite so daring since. She was not so lucky on the modesty front when she was snapped topless in the south of France, although, in that case, it was what she was not wearing that caused the problem, not the outfit itself. Her off-duty uniform then of jeans, tweed jackets and Penelope Chilvers tassel boots, the archetypal country salon you might say, has hardly changed from that day to this. And, unlike her California-based sister-in-law, she actually manages to come across as a woman of the people, even if some of us might balk at paying the best part of £500 for a bit of footwear. Kate had a long, slow apprenticeship into membership of the royal family and the same could be said of her emergence into the showstopper we see today. Speaking on the podcast, royal commentator Jonathan Sacerdotti suggested that the Duchess of Sussex may not return because of fears about her popularity with the public. The podcast's host Christina Garibaldi asked Jonathan whether the Jubilee celebrations will be the first time that Harry and Meghan return to the UK together, and suggested it might be a possibility for the Queen to meet her great-granddaughter Lilibet. Well that could be the case, Jonathan replied. I have heard some rumours that maybe Prince Harry will come back without Meghan.